welcome back to this video. This is a continuation of the Seashell Beginner series. If you are new here, kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you are updated whenever we release a new video. So previously, we had talked about the while loop and the do while loop. If you did not watch that, I do encourage us to do so. In this particular video, we'll be looking at jump statements in C -sharp. We have basically four of them. The first is the continue statement. And this is used to go back to the beginning of a loop block of code, thereby skipping the current iteration it was on. We'll look at examples. I just want to go through this and then we'll go to examples and look at them practically. We also have the break statement, which is used to leave the operation before its completion time. And this is also used in the switch statement. You remember when we looked at switch statement, we saw the breaks, we, we, we saw the break keyword being used here. Also, we have the return statement. We will not talk about this here because when we're talking about methods and functions, that is where we'll be using it because the return keyword actually makes more sense in that context. And then we have the last one, which is the go to statement. And this allows you to move from a particular location in your code to some other labeled statements. So let's just go to the code and look at how we could do all of this. So for this to work, all these operations only exist within, majorly exist within a, a loop, especially when we talk of the first two, that is the continue and the break. The go to can be used outside the context of a loop and return also is used within a, uh, the context of a method usually. It doesn't require it to be within a loop per se. So let's look at an example. So let's say we have a loop. Let's say we have a while loop. So let's say while through, we want to console log the right line. I want to console log uh, big time. So let's say this, this is our program. And you see what happens is this will continue because this statement is true. True is always true. So it means that this will continually run forever. This is a statement that if I run this, you will just keep seeing big time, big time, big time being displayed. And that's going to be all that we'll see because that's what this program is actually doing. It's going to be run. It wants it to print out big time, big time, big time. And so that's why we have it perform the way it's showing there. So but what we have, we have the break. So for example, if we have the break here, what this break does is it says wherever you are in the code. So when you start, when it hit the break, it comes out of the loop. So, you know, ideally what should happen is when this condition becomes false, then we terminate the while loop. But with the break keyword, it doesn't even care what the condition is. At that point, wherever it sees the break, it comes out of the loop. So for example, if we run this, it means that this will console log the first time and then after that it breaks. So we will not see that continuous uh, big time, big time we saw. We will just see the big time display one time. So sorry, this is just, so it, you, you will see it just displays big time one time. And that's because we have told it we want to break at that point. So this is the break keyword. Now the for loop, let me just, create a for loop because that will make more sense for what I want to show us for continue. So let me comment this out. So let's say we have a for loop and we have something for days of the week of the month, sorry. So let's say I less than 30, I plus plus. And so, or let me use something more descriptive. Let's say day. So we are starting from a day equals to one all the way to 30. So we want to go from when day is equals to one to day 30. And basically I just want to console log uh, that great day. Basically that's what I want to do. So every day should be a great day. But there is one particular day I don't want to be a great day for example. So I could say that if uh, the day, let's say the day is 19, I want to continue. So what this does is you are saying every day should be a great day, but on the 19th, I do not want that. So what continue does is it starts. So, you know, your application, your for loop goes through this again and again. So 
it's coming at the beginning it states is one equals to 19 no so it just comes it does this uh console the right line and it keeps doing that but when it is 19 when it hits 19 when day is 19 and this is 19 it says continue what that does is unlike the break that if we put a break here what the break will have done was at 19 so you know what we, could, we can do let's just do this and put day here and then run this so that we can see the difference between the break and the continue so you see we have from day one up to day 18 great day 18 and then it stops there because at 19 it breaks and goes out of the application of this for loop sorry so but if we use a continue here if we use a continue and we run it again we'll see what will happen is that okay so we see we have grade day one up to 18 you see we miss the 19 and continue with 20 so that's what the continue keyword does it tells you wherever you are now on this very iteration so you're on the 19th iteration it tells you to stop there and go to the next iteration and the next iteration is going to be 20 so it skips 19 so they definitely uh, what continue actually stands for is like is a skip it tells you to skip way from the iteration you are and go on to the next iteration so that's the difference between the continue and the break keyword now you will notice that my if statement i'm just putting everything in one line it is because in c sharp if you have one line or if your if statement just has one line you could just bring it out so for example this is the same as this so instead of putting since it's just one line of statement that i want in my for if statement I do not necessarily need to put it inside the curly bracket but if I have multiple lines then I must put it within my curly bracket so but since it was just one line that was why I put it uh, outside I just put it it knows it that if it's one line then it's fine but if it's multiple lines then it will ignore all the other things as part of not part of the if statement if it is not within a curly bracket so that was just a side note there so we have discussed the while loop of this called the for I mean we've discussed the so we've discussed the continue and we've discussed the break keyword. So now let's go to the go to keyword. I've said that we'll not talk about the return keyword here because it makes more sense within the context of a function. So we'll talk about it at that point. So now let's go to the go to keyword i've said that we'll not talk about the return keyword here because it makes more sense within the context of a function so we'll talk about it at that point but for the go to statement let me comment this out let me just comment this out so that it's clear what we are doing so if i have uh, let's say i am to console log let's say i want to write line number one this is what where my code is and you know because code in our program operates sequentially it means that we expect it to operate from the top to the bottom right so let me just have this duplicated and then i could say four five and six so let's so the way you label a place so let's just call let me call this let me come here and just call this end uh, and then what i will now do here is let me come here and i will say go to end so what this does what the go to keyword does is our program will start from the top right and so the first thing we see is it console logs one it console logs number one console logs number two and when it sees the go to, it tells it where you want to go to. You are telling it, I want to go to wherever you see this end, this label called end. And this is how we've marked the label. So what it does, it, it jumps from here and goes to wherever it finds this end, for example. And it sees the end here and it says, okay, at the end, what do I want to do? I want to say number six. So if we run this now, what we see, okay we see one two and six because what it does is it shows it does this line it goes to this line and at this line we are telling it to go to end so it looks for where is this end 
it comes here this is where they end it and it continues operating from there and at that point this is number six so it jumps three four and five that's what the go to statement looks like and it can it can go book forward or backward so for example let's say this is a start sorry let's say this is start this is start at this point i could say go to start but this will just cause a continuous loop uh, a continuous loop where it shows one two six one two six so let's just see it and i will try and explain why it is so you see one two six one two six one two six the reason is because when it starts it say it goes to one it now goes to this two and at this point say go to end so when it goes to the end it comes to six and after six is a go to start and that is going back to this place and at start it says one two then it says go to end again and go to end is here again so it just keeps going through that and it's just basically like a while of a for loop that doesn't end so basically this is the go to statement however it is very much discouraged to use the go to statement you have is you are not encouraged to use the go to statement i will be frank with you i've never had any cause to use the go to statement you actually do not you need to use the go to statement you could use if you need to break the flow you could use the uh, continue you could use the break keyword but avoid using the go to statement i'm just showing you this because it exists and just for you to know in case uh, you have a particular scenario where you need to uh, use it but you see it makes it hard to understand what's going on because you see i have to start from here and say one two i see the go to i now have to look for where this end is and i go to the end and it's telling me i should go back to the start so you it, it just kind of messes up how it flows unlike when you have your normal while loop you can see how your loop is going through and you see where the continue or the break is and you know that okay at this point you are coming out if it's a break if it's continue it means you are skipping to the next one so basically these are the jump statements in c sharp and i believe that uh, this is very clear but if you do have questions or you need clarity on something please drop them in the comment section and i will definitely respond to them Thank you and see you in the next video.